The Marantz SR7012 is a nine channel AVR that can process up to 11 channels if you have an external amplifier. So if you just added a two channel amplifier, you can go from nine channels to 11 channels. Um, now, I don't have an affiliate with relationship with Marantz, but you can follow my Amazon links in the description below if you're inclined to support the channel. Now, I've been a fan of Denon and Marantz long before ever getting in touch with them. Uh, I really like the way they handle their bass management, and of course their sound quality is pretty well known. Uh, Marantz was kind enough to send out this uh, SR7012 for review, and so a big thank you to them. There are a few things in particular that stand out about this amp, and I'm going to cover the highlights of what I find important. Now you get DTSX, Dolby Atmos, and RO3D. The RO3D requires a firmware update, which as long as you've got internet connection is no problem. Uh, this is a wireless amplifier, so you don't need to run a hard line. I think most amplifiers are wireless these days. But it does have the three main immersive audio formats, which is overhead sound and if you haven't done that and really experienced it, it's quite a thing. Uh, you've got the overhead speakers that provide those overhead effects. And I think when I talk about immersive audio formats like Atmos, DTSX, and things like that, uh, to mention that there are settings in, your, in most Blu-ray players that you need to change in order to get those full effects. Uh, so check out my Blu-ray player uh, unlock or the Dolby Atmos hack. Both of those are helpful. It's just a simple little adjustment that you need to make that basically allows the Blu-ray player to transmit the higher end audio formats. So that's just one of those things I like to mention anytime I mention those formats. You also get XT32 room correction. Now you can see my small room video and my XT32 videos. Uh, this is a very valuable feature, especially if you've got a room that's far from perfect. Uh, the more challenging the room is, the more beneficial XT32 is. Um, the Odyssey XT32 version is just, it really makes a big difference. Um, you, again, see my small room video on that. Uh, it, it, if you, especially if you have a small room, I can't express the importance of XT32. It, it really does make that big of a difference. It's also got HEOS, uh, which makes Tidal uh, very easy. Streaming Tidal through HEOS is great uh, for a number of reasons. Um, you know, for those of you that are unfamiliar, Tidal is lossless audio, and so it's CD quality music. And you can see when you're playing the music through Tidal, through the Heos app, you can actually see that you're getting a true FLAC file. Um, and so it's, it's really nice. And, and if you're wondering if there is a difference or if there isn't, um, right away, first off, you might not notice a huge difference, but when you go to different tracks that really highlight uh, the differences and you go from something like Spotify to Tidal, you can, you can hear it more. And then once you hear it, it's really obvious from that point on. Uh, it's particularly with the higher frequencies, it seems. Uh, there's less itty bitty distortion in those higher frequencies. Everything's just a little bit cleaner. And, but once you hear it in that cleaner format, going back, you, you tend to notice it more. So, uh, but yeah, I really enjoy Tidal and, and streaming it over the Heos app is nice. And I'll say kind of as a side note, um, I was driving down the road and I, I accidentally played uh, Tidal through the Heos app instead of the Tidal app when I was in my car. And I got a text from my wife saying, are you listening to ghosts and stuff? <laughs> I, I, apparently I wasn't even hooked up to the internet at home, but I was able to play music in my car five miles away and it came on in the house and she was kind of shocked by it. She thought maybe I was home, but she came out and no one was here. So that's just kind of a little funny thing is it works even if you're not on the same network, it works attached to the, the blue or the, uh, the Marantz. And so that was just kind of a funny little experience. It's also Dolby Vision capable, um, which is nice. Uh, that's one of the higher end video formats and it passes that no problem. Um, it also has EARC or Enhanced Audio Return Channel. Now, so if your TV has Enhanced Audio Return Channel as well, it will pass lossless audio. Now, only newer TVs do this. Um, this TV in particular, this is a uh, LG 3D 4K with Dolby Vision. Uh, you can't buy anything like that anymore because they don't make 3D anymore. Um, so, needless to say, I'm not trying to get rid of that TV anytime soon because there's nothing that can truly replace it. Um, but it, the thing is, is that's, a, a, I believe, a 2016 model and it did not have 
ERC, so it doesn't have that enhanced audio return channel. And so what that means is if you have an older TV and you run your Blu-ray player through your TV first and then to the amplifier, you're basically going to filter out any of the, the high-end audio formats, any of the lossless formats. And the reason is the audio return channel, uh, the original format, not the enhanced, but the original, um, doesn't have the bandwidth to support the higher end audio. And so it goes from the TV through an HDMI cable down to your amplifier. And I still use it. I absolutely still use the audio return channel. I just run everything from the Blu-ray player to the amplifier, amplifier first, then to the TV. Um, basically, if you run it through the TV first and then to the amplifier, you're basically filtering out all the good audio formats. Um, and that's unless you have an enhanced audio return channel. So I think that's worth mentioning. Something else that's really helpful is uh, it has a, a backlit remote and you can just push the button on the side and it just lights up for a second. Uh, it doesn't come on every time you use it so it doesn't use that much battery. Uh, but when you need it, when you're watching, you know, movies in the dark or whatever, you just hit the little side button, it lights up, makes everything easier to see. It's just a nice little benefit of having this particular amplifier. Um, the remote's pretty easy to use. Uh, there's nothing about it that is particularly complicated. Uh, but yeah, having that little backlight's a really nice feature. Overall, the sound quality is definitely there. It functions exactly how I want it to. Uh, I don't have any complaints there. Um, I really enjoy it overall. It's been very fun to, to check out this amplifier. You can see my videos on how I set up my X6200, which is the Denon. Um, if you're not aware, Denon and Marantz are, are you know, it, it's the same company. And so if you check out my X6200 uh, amp setup, it's virtually the same. It all translates very well. Uh, and so it's, 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 that's a resource you have already if you're looking at this particular amplifier. You can go to that video and see how I set it up personally. And, and I guess to that point, for my viewers, I'm very familiar with these amps. And I can usually help you figure out little issues here and there. A lot of times people will say, well, I'm having this issue or that issue. And usually it's just a matter of, you know, turning up the, the crossover a little bit or, or turning on dynamic EQ or turning off uh, dynamic volume, things like that, things that I'm very familiar with. Um, again, you could probably save a lot more time by going and watching that video, uh, but it is something I can't help with. It takes me a little bit longer to respond to comments, so watching that video would probably be a little bit quicker, uh, but you know, it is, it's, it's, something, it's an amp I'm very familiar with. So for my viewers that have these little questions or uh, little things that they're not unsure about, I, I know these amps very well. And so for me, it's just easy. It's usually just like, yeah, check this, check this, check that. And usually the problem's resolved. As far as any hesitations about this amplifier, um, I guess I, if I had to nitpick something, it'd be the portal display. Um, the portal display is pretty small uh, and, it, and it makes it a little harder to see like the volume settings and things like that. Um, a lot of times I'll run with the, the cover down just because it's easier to see uh, what's going on, things like that. Um, and you know, honestly, if they were to ever to redesign this thing, um, it'd be nice to see like a screen underneath the portal display that was, you know, outside of the, the fold down thing and just have it to where it was blank until you activated the remote. Um, you know, again, um, that, that's really nitpicky stuff. Um, I gotta say overall, uh, the look is awesome. I mean, truly, it's, 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 a, it's a very good looking amplifier. Uh, and, you know, most of the time, too, the on screen display covers my needs. So I'm not really missing that display in that case. Um, however, if you were utilizing uh, the uh, EARC function and running your Blu ray player through your EARC equipped TV and then to the amplifier, then you wouldn't get the on screen display. So that is a potential issue and it's pretty easily fixable. You just, you know, fold the, the panel display down and you'd be able to see it. And uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, that's Bear. Uh, he's uh, getting up from his nap here. <laughs> Another thing worth mentioning is that the uh, Marantz is, tends to be a little, run a little bit taller than the Denon uh, amplifier. So if you have a smaller, uh, you know, area where you're putting the amplifier, that could be an issue. Um, 
it's not a major one, but again, if, if you're really tight on space, it's something to consider. Uh, definitely not something I consider a drawback. But overall, you know, I'd say that the Marantz looks more impressive, and, and it's a very, <laughs> it's a very sexy AVR. Um, it's very good looking AVR. Um, so I don't know. I, I really like it. I don't think there's really any any other way to describe the the appearance of it. Um, it's it's very nice. Um, one last thing too is that because it's not a current model, you can get some pretty good pricing on that. So it's very appealing for that option. Of course, it's always worth checking against you know current options, uh, uh, current models to see if it's got any features that you want in particular. Um, I know the upcoming IMAX format uh, is something that might be worth looking at. Uh, but uh, as it sits now, there's only two amps I'm aware of that, that come with it. Um, the uh, Denon X6500 and the 4500. So um, again, you know, and, and by the way, that's like, a, it's like an enhanced DTS format. And so, you know, that's something to consider as well. But if you're willing to forgo that, uh, this is a, a pretty good buy right now. Um, it's a pretty high-end amplifier and uh, it, it's not very expensive. So um, compared to what it used to be priced at and things like that. So, uh, you know, it, it, it can be a pretty good bargain. So, um, but overall, yeah, I really like the Denon and Marantz products. I find them very easy to work with. Uh, I really like the sound, obviously, or I wouldn't use them myself. Um, so yeah, but I really like the 7012. I think it's got a lot of great features. And if it's, if you're considering it, I definitely think it's, it's one that deserves a serious look. Um, so anyway, thanks so much for watching. Um, please subscribe. And, uh, if you haven't already, uh, you can check me out on Facebook and I'm on Twitter as well. Uh, you know, hit the like on the, on the Facebook page so you can get notifications, things I do through Facebook. And I'm going to try and make some Tidal playlists. Uh, I've already got the Spotify playlist. I've got a bunch of music on there. So that's another thing you can do if you haven't done that already. I've got over a thousand songs on several different playlists. Um, so. It's just ideas for music, ideas for content, that kind of thing. So it's just fun. Um, it's not something, you know, I'm compensated to do or anything like that. It just, it's something I do because it's fun for my audience, I think. Um, so anyway, again, thanks so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe, hit the bell. Um, give me a like if you like this video. Uh, give me a dislike if you don't like it. <laughs> it. It all helps me understand what my audience likes and what you want to see and, and things like that. So it's all just feedback for me. So again, thanks so much for watching and please subscribe. Just wandering around. Yeah.